Oh no, it's it was shitty, shitty. now it's it sucky. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, you're gonna cut that out. Yeah, you're yeah, totally gonna cut yeah. that out. Alright. Hey guys, Basil Will from Grayson Hobby, and today we got a surprise. We are gonna revisit the Wizard 220S. I'm gonna call this 1.1. 1 .1. 1 .1. um, they did a couple of revisions, and I want to share with you guys a couple of things that they've done on the newer models. But the biggest thing, the biggest complaint from the last video that everybody, every reviewer just ripped yeah. him was the frame. Now this is a true carbon fiber arms confirmed, and the top plate and bottom plate it appear okay. to be. We haven't tested that. We don't have a meter here today, but they appear not to be that wafer. Yeah, yes. they are no longer that foam wafer in the middle of um, the carbon top and bottom. So it looks like they've actually gone back, and this looks like it might be just as strong as the old wizard right. again. All right, I'm going to go over a couple things I've seen on that that they've improved upon, and we'll go over some pluses and minuses. All right, so if you like our video, please subscribe below. And if you for all your FPV needs and other airplane drones, you name it, visit GraysonHobby.com. All right, so since this is a little different, normally we sell them in the ready to flies as, uh, as well as the RF. Since this is only an RF, uh, it's a newer. I'm gonna go ahead and do a little unboxing video of this one just to be sure. Uh, first things first, note it does not come with the Runcam 3. Also, I don't know about that. Runcam has been discontinued. Runcam 3 has been yeah, discontinued. Yeah, it's officially, I believe, discontinued right. everywhere. You don't need a Runcam 3 because you have the Foxier box, which is a 4K versus a regular. Yeah. All right, All right so, so what's in the box? The manual that pretty much tells you nothing other than useless specs that really don't apply to anything, so that's junk. Um, Box of the props that are very high, uh, highly aggressive and not very efficient. So again, eh. Junk. See, I'm very excited about this one. No, you um, can always get some dowel props right there. Yeah. All right. All right. Um, you do get the GoPro style that's mount. That's probably the only thing that's worth, cube mount. worthwhile. Now this is the same one. It's squishable, flexible, rubberized stuff that the GoPro is a little small in there, but the boxier, foxier box fits perfect, I think. Yeah, the, the session actually was a little small. It it fits in there, but when you go to tighten it down, you can see it warp around yeah. it. Yeah, all right. Um, so that's that. You get the little foam pads. You get the little Allen, or the socket wrench things for the prop nuts and all that. Um, you get the Pagoda antenna. You get a set of spare screws. Get some prop nuts there. You get zip ties there. Right. What is the first thing you notice with this one? Because we kind of hyped it up here. What is the well, first thing? First thing I noticed with this one compared to the older one, and I got my old one around here somewhere. This is the hybrid I got left over. You'll see in here you got that white layer. That's that. It's actually a compressed foam apparently. Um, in the it's not top plate, fiber. bottom it's plate, and the arms. Yeah, these are different arms. But that's why off the bat I looked at it and I'm like, whoa, wait a second. They actually did something a little different. This is. It looks like a full top uh, carbon plate, bottom plate, the middle plate, or this little. Uh, support plate right here at the bottom and the arms are arms all are carbon fiber confirmed by eachine they are definitely carbon fiber top plate they said they weren't going to do it but this is a surprise to us yeah this was um i really and i can't tell i'll have to put a meter on it and see if this is actually uh fiberglass or carbon fiber uh, unfortunately i don't have my multimeter here with me today but you can totally tell the difference between this one yeah it definitely just easily looks a lot more solid so that's one thing i noticed there on the bottom of the quad, they actually put these little uh, fiberglass pads in between the LED strip and the um, motor mount. That's a great because they did it attempt to address the LED shorting, but the problem is, guys, that wasn't the issue. The issue was the screws on the top side. So realistically, that should have just had little uh, fiber washers, um, like PC board washers, should have been on the top side and not that fiber disc doesn't really do anything because it's it's not conductive to the plastic, it's conductive to the screw. No, oh, the soft mount's still in there, so, okay. I mean, they got the soft mounts in there, the little pad, it was kind of useless. The only thing it's doing is sp uh, raising the screws out so the motors aren't, uh, the screws don't touch the windings if you crank it down uh, too much. That's good though. You so that's good, but again, they could have just put little plastic, they could have killed two birds with one stone by putting little plastic washers so between the screw and the side, thing. Basically. Yeah, uh, yeah, they, they kind of right. screwed up on that one. Uh, so motors are the same, right? Yeah, they're still 2206s, 20, uh, 2300 KV, 2206s. Right. So we noticed some some things inside. Let's yeah, and inside. I actually, um, let me crack this open real quick. Let's come back to it. I'm going to take it apart and we'll show a couple things that I noticed in there. Okay. All right, so we opened it up oh. and... Well, the connector they're using 
is not the I, uh, IPEX or UFL connector. It's actually called a new one that's actually starting to show up in a lot of these all-in-one VTXs and flight controllers and all that. Um, this is called an MMCX connector, I believe. Uh, it's pretty nice. It, it pops in, quick disconnect, so it can swivel really nice. So when you're taking it apart, working on it, you don't have to worry about breaking the uh, solder joint or anything like that. So that goes on the or, antenna part, right? Yeah, it, um, this is for the going to the antenna. Yeah. Um, this is just the extension here. But it's a nice, um, it has a nice swivel. It's got a little grip on it so you can pop it off so you can work on the quad a little easier. I like that. I think that was a great move. So um, would that be an upgrade? I say that's an upgrade or, from the previous model. Or just upgrade the, the, the original uh, 220S. Okay. Um, however, Iashin, you didn't see the video, I guess, because... <laughs> they saw it, trust me. Oh, uh, I don't know. I mean... I don't so know what's playing. the problem there? This should have been that way. So the reason being... With this top plate on, you can get to the button and you can see the LED to change the channel. The way you guys have it, or Iashin has it, I understand it's a shorter route to the wire, but with the top plate on it, you can't get to the button. You, I mean, you have to take, it's all the way under here, you have to take the strap out or cut it. I, I don't even know. I mean, that's that was just a horrible oversight there. Now, no, wait, is that the same VTX as the original? No, it actually does look a little different. Um, the connector's definitely changed. It does look like a little bit's changed, but not, let's see. So it's not the exact model, but it could be the same chipset or whatever they call it. Yeah, it's it's pretty much the same thing with a slight modification. Mainly the connector is the only thing I see changed. Okay. But that I'd say that's a plus for the change, but at the same time, um, I would have liked to have seen swapped around to where it's easy right. ac access from the front. And it still has the vertical or horizontal lines. Yeah, but that's that's just, uh, we won't even get into that. So another thing you'll notice is they actually went ahead and soldered the blob there. The board on the Omnibus F4, this is a V3, it looks like. Yeah, this is a V3 with, with a barometer, which still has a barometer on this one. It's cool. Um, but they actually went ahead and put a solder blob on there to short the S-Bus pad and not the PPM. However, from the factory, it actually is has a trace underneath it to keep that short. So that was kind of... It's nice that they did it. It wasn't really necessary. Still have the RAM shorted, which is the uh, voltage selection source. It's still shorted for uh, VCCN, I believe. Can't tell, I have to look at that later. Um, but the flight controller does look like a, a newer variation or slightly different than the one I had. It's not that it's a different board, but it looks definitely a different batch. So um, I know um, RC Model Reviews, Bruce, I believe it was, um, complained about he had really bad issues with the flight controller locking out going bad. So. I'm thinking Iashin may have seen something in this first batch. Again, sorry for you guys that bought the first batch of these things from somewhere else. We warned you. Um, but um, we warned you. The, uh, soldering looks really good. It's nice, clean solder on it. I mean, yeah, they they um, the RAM uh, Omnibus calls it RAM. It's basically a voltage selection source. You can short it to either five volt or VBAT. Um, so basically, this one is taking your battery voltage, so your camera and VTX is running off the, this power lead, which is um, the, the VBAT source. Um, so what, three cell, four cell, whatever you're running. Um, but the board itself actually, it looks clean. It looks like a nice board. So I think this is a, either a new production batch of the board or possibly a new manufacturer or new vendor for the board. Well, their last model got ripped by everybody, including us, and we told them we weren't gonna carry it. And it, not like necessarily that. their last model, but the original release of the 220S. Yeah. So you gotta remember, this is kind of a, not necessarily a version two, because I still feel that there's a couple things that need to be done to really justify calling it a version two. I guess down there, there's enough, nothing else you need to look at, right? Yeah, uh, under here, oh, actually, no, let's, you're right. There's a couple other things. So let's get this out of the way, get this LED out of the way. Um, another thing, let's just, I don't know if we can really get to it. I'm gonna take it apart, but I don't know how much farther we can get this apart without desoldering stuff. I'm gonna take the standoffs here. Let's lift it up a little bit. And I don't know if you can see in there, but Iashin has also surprised us with a new PDB at the bottom. Now this PDB does not have any actual electronics on it. Um, the only thing its purpose is for is to redirect the five volt source down into the LEDs. So there is no reason to have this PDB other than powering the LEDs. There's no like um, G10 pad or anything between the carbon fiber and this bottom PDB. So I'm hoping they did a really good job coating the bottom so you don't have through hole wiring and shorting the five volt to the carbon. Shorting is bad. Yeah, shorting would be bad. Um, so now we got a little part here and that, that we thoroughly went through this guy and that's nothing else could be. Yeah, they, it looks like uh, same same speed controller, same four-in-one. 
Um, that was never an issue for you, was it? No, it looks like if you have to change the arms on this one, you can just unbolt it. But the problem is you're still gonna have to take down to here to get to the screws. Where's the screws? Right up here. You're, I mean, to, in order oh, to lock wow. that down, it's gonna be a pain in the butt take, still. You gotta take all, you gotta, basically you have to break it down to where you are now. Yeah, take, take, I would've liked to seen the, uh, like the locking nuts that are, that kind of hold in or maybe milled in to hold the lock nut. Um, would've been nice, but Again, we are talking a budget price point on this kind of thing. You can't, you know, you can ask for a million things, but you can only get so much for X number of dollars. Um, so keep that in mind when you're buying something. Don't expect a Ferrari and pay for right. a Honda. Yeah, another plus here before I get too far out. Um, keep in mind, I don't know if you guys remember on the first video, I did complain about the wires were really short. I mean, they were literally like this red wire was going straight up to this. There was no slop in there, no play. Um, Eoshin did listen to that. That was one of the complaints we really spouted about. Um, they did increase the wire length. It looks like about a quarter inch to maybe a half inch almost of extra wiring, uh, depending on if you're on the inside or the outside. Um, so what's that for? Why well, the extra important? wire there, it yeah. gives a little tug room. In case you do break an arm or something like that, it has a little give before it actually you know pulls on the um, the solder pad. Okay. So, so you know, you, you're really, less likely to rip a, yeah, a little relief on the wire, exactly. This is, this is wired up for the A A8S. I wish they would have just done a regular servo lead like the old wizard did, um, the, or the original wizard. Um, I think that should have been a servo lead just that way, but I understand they're doing it in a factory to where the next step would have been installing a receiver, adding a radio, and sending out the door. Pluses on it. Uh, pluses, first and foremost, carbon fiber. Awesome. I'm glad that they did that. That was, it, granted, it never should have happened without it. Um, positive. That's a good. Positive number two. Um, positive number two, the PDB. I think getting rid of that PDB and going to a, a flat plate was a good idea. Um, a third positive. Three pos number three. Number three, I would say is that MMCX connector. MMX connector. I think that's a good idea because you can quickly disconnect, because it is kind of a pain in the butt when you take the top plate off. Um, I think that was Which great. Which you have to change the channel. So, so and the fourth positive. Uh, the flight controller. It looks like they've changed the flight controller possibly. Um, it looks a little better quality, maybe a little higher end components or something like that. Probably a different manufacturer, whoever's making these boards. I Anyways, skipped one positive. Oh, uh, that'd that be five. That, yeah, we're you're gonna- not, You're not allowed to have five. You're not allowed to have five? What's your All favorite? right, take the connector out. We're gonna go to this. Um, they did add relief for the wires, for the, the, the motor wires going to the 4 and one ESP control, but there's also negatives. Uh, first one jumps out at me. These LEDs, guys. Yashin, what are you thinking? You went right back to the old LEDs <laughs> that suck. They have shorts. Now, the uh, the screws are still overlapping on the faces. You put the little fiberglass plate in there, great, but you did the wrong side. It needs fiber washers on the other side. Let me solder my Pagonia antenna. <laughs> Anyways, rambling again, sorry guys. All it needs is simple washers. Yashin, please, please, please do it. The, the ability to change your channel. Yeah. Because every time we fly, we're always on Fat Shark 1. <laughs> And we can't change it. And I'm not gonna undo six screws. Hopefully, I don't pull a wire out and then put it. Yeah, that that got Ishin got to change it. The the integrated arms. I wish they would have the lock nuts in there to where you can take the bottom plate off without having to take the whole quad apart. Other than so that, on the though, positive. No, this is a great model. <laughs> I missed the negative. One, one more negative. They didn't lock tight the screws again. Oh, uh, lock so tight the not screws. Not only now is washers, that part of a of an R. I mean, that's. I think I mean, that's I don't kind know of. About a, that because I think you the have user to, should do that. You, yeah, I don't know if that's a positive or negative. I don't think that's on the user for an ARF. No, ready to fly, probably so. So if you're buying an ARF, uh, especially from us, I'm going to include the washers to put underneath the motor things. But you are going to need to go through, take the screws out, lock tight, and put them back in. This is um, yeah, and it's not a ready to fly. Yeah, I mean, this is a, if you're buying a ready to fly, we do it. But almost on ready yeah. to fly. The components will be there, just like you have to yeah. screw on your antenna and, and put your kit. receiver in. Almost ready to fly. Um, you are going to have to add the washers on there. I mean, if you don't, you might run into a short, kill your five volt line, lose your radio, boom, right. done. Um, or flyaway, or who knows. Right. Shows that they were listening. Yeah. It more than anything, it shows Eoshin's listening. So guys, definitely, if you got opinions on Eoshin stuff or com uh, constructive criticism, put it out there because Eoshin will listen if you Comments. just bombard them. Yeah. So post below if you want to see certain things within reason. Don't you know? Don't expect them to put a GoPro on it and include it for one hundred and seventy dollars. Right. If you thoroughly enjoyed this rambling video we made on the two twenty S one point one. Or I'm gonna deem it the 1.1. 1.1. 1.1. New frame and all that good stuff. PDB, new frame. Leave the comments below on uh, what you think on this one, what video we should do next on this one in terms of a receiver. So we give us a couple of op options for receivers. Um, we got that new one from FlySky. XRSB, uh, from, from I, think, I think that'll definitely be a future episode. 
let us know if you want to do the LC filter, all that good stuff, and we'll try to fit it in our busy, hectic schedule. All right, and again, subscribe to our channel for our next video and hit that little bell thing so you know.